Hey, happy Saturday. Gosh, I've been at home doing stuff. I got up this morning, first thing, I went downstairs and there was just dry cat food all over the floor. See, what happens is sometimes Nobu will come to the door, to the sliding door at the back, and Evie and Nobu like to like charge at one another it's a game i mean because if you open the door they don't do shit to each other it's like people online and then people in real life it's that the little thing it's just like that they it's a it's just a little game that they do evie was really serious about it at first but now she just does it for fun and she'll kind of get over to the side like under my my desk right there where you can't really see like if you're outside you can't see her and then she'll go bleh at, at Nobu and then Nobu will go bleh back at her and sometimes in the midst of that because the cat food is right there she'll knock the cat food over well that is what had happened even with the configuration of the cat food bowls you would think it would be impossible for them to knock it over or knock any out of it but she still manages to do it because she's just really talented and uh so I can't I went down the stairs this morning and saw that so I had to clean that up and then somebody had barfed on the carpet under the dining room table I'd clean that up it's always something I swear so then I did my my little workout this morning and I'm trying I'm, I'm out and about right now I got to get back home soon though because my son is having a sleepover tonight and I think the first kid is supposed to arrive around lunchtime so I got to get home but I'm at the little thrift store I wasn't sure if they were going to be open today because it's about time for them to do the switch over from spring and summer clothes to fall and winter clothes and when they do that they usually close for about a week while they're you know to give them time to get all the old stuff out and get all the new stuff put in but they were open and they have all of their summer clothes half price and I got I didn't really need anything, but you know, I, I like to give them money anyway. And I figure like, like most of this stuff was, I think everything I bought was a dollar 50 a piece. You know, it's fine. I got this cute little pink, look, it matches my nails. I'm in the middle of redoing my nails right now. I've only done one coat and it's all messy. Normally you don't see it in the, in the in-between stages, but it's in the in-between stages. I have to go home and do another coat clean them up and do a top coat but I'm doing like a bright pink kind of like a bubblegum pink and it matches this cute little it's a little button down top from New York and Company this was a dollar fifty it has a little three quarter length sleeves that look really cute with like a little black blazer or gray or whatever so I got that and I bought this kind of a burgundy uh, short sleeve top it has sort of a scoop neckline to it you know from a new day. This was a dollar fifty. Got that. And I've been kind of looking at this top for the last few weeks, and I thought that's actually really cute. But I kept passing it by. But it, it, I decided if it was still here, I would more seriously consider getting it. I know it's a huge decision, a dollar fifty. But this cute little top. Look at look at these little flowers. Isn't it cute? What is that? The ginkgo leaf. This is embroidered on the back of it. It's this cute little sort of a sage green tank top and it has little little flowers that go all the way down this the front. I just thought it was adorable, this cute little top. This was a dollar fifty. And I bought a pair of jeans. I don't need any more damn jeans. I don't wear the jeans I have. But again, these were also only a dollar fifty. Some little cute little Gloria Vanderbilt boot cut jeans I don't even I didn't even try them on I don't know I mean I think they'll fit they're pretty stretchy you know you have the shrink to fit jeans I need those stretch to fit jeans <laughs> yeah but these I thought these were cute so again a dollar fifty you can't even get a 20 ounce Pepsi for a dollar fifty anywhere anymore I figure if I wear them one time, I've gotten my money's worth out of them. And then they'll probably just come right back here. I do a lot of catch and release. We gonna go now. I do a lot of catch and release. I call it catch and release where I will come here or go to some other thrift store and I'll buy an article of clothing and wear it once or twice or not at all. And then just donate it right back. <laughs> yeah, I do a lot of that because sometimes I hate trying on stuff in the stores. Now, they have a dressing room in there. You can go in there and try it on, but 
Which way do I want to go? I don't want to go that way. I, I don't really feel like trying it on. That's just too much effort. <laughs> I'll just kind of eyeball it like, I mean, it should fit. It's close enough. And sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes I get it home and like, no, it does not fit me. <laughs> but more often than not, I can pretty much eyeball stuff. Now, jeans are trickier. Jeans, you know, they may fit in the waist, but not in the legs and vice versa. They may just not look good, you know. Any number of things could go wrong with jeans. Other articles of clothing are a little bit more forgiving, but jeans are, yeah, they're kind of tricky. But I normally don't feel like trying them on, and a lot of times it comes down to the shoes I'm wearing. If I'm wearing shoes that have to be laced up and they're kind of a pain in the ass to take off and put back on, I ain't trying on anything below the waist. I'm not trying on jeans. But I'm not trying on anything that requires me to take my shoes off. I'm just not, I'm just not going to do it. So, I'll just look at them and look at them and depending on the mood I'm in, I may get them, I may not. How adventurous do I feel today? You know, that kind of thing. Well, now I feel like going to Goodwill. I don't go to Goodwill anywhere near as much as I used to. I really don't. I haven't been to Goodwill in a bit. But I'm going to go up to, there's one on North Battleground Avenue that I like. And with this new loop that we have here in Greensboro, I can get there a hell of a lot faster. I used to never go to that Goodwill. But now we have this little loop and it just, whoop, it just takes you right up there. We'll go up there. And, uh. It's a pretty good size store, and they have, you know, a pretty decent selection of stuff. I get a lot of my workout clothes from that Goodwill. A lot of the stuff hanging in my closet that I wear to work out in came from there. Most of my workout clothes did come from thrift stores, either this little one or one of the Goodwills. Yeah, I buy very little of it new, and it, it works just fine. I've never had a problem with it. So... I just think some of that stuff is just outrageously overpriced. Just, I mean, I just think it is. Now, some of it I have bought new. Like, I bought, what was it, last summer? or some, Yeah, it was last summer. There was this outfit that Under Armour had on their website that I just kept looking at and looking at. Like, I really like that. The top and the pants. Like, I just, that is so damn cute. But I, 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 I looked at it for probably two months before I finally just, oh, just buy it. You're killing me. So I finally, <laughs> I finally bought it. And I do wear it on a regular basis still. It's just adorable. I like it. It's kind of a sage green color. And it's just, it's just a kind of a different color from what you normally see. I love it. But yeah, most of it I don't buy new. Um, and there are consignment shops around here that some people really like. Uh, one is called Style Encore. I haven't had a lot of luck in there, but there's this one lady that I work, that I see at a lot of my classes. She loves, she's in there all the time. And she said she gets all kinds of workout clothes in there, but I don't know. I thought their prices were kind of not great. She said, girl, just stick to the clearance section. That's what I do. I love her to death. She's great. She reminds me of Joy from, she's like Joy from My Name of Earl, if Joy was nice. Because she kind of looks like her. She's little and blonde, and she kind of talks like Joy. Every time I see her, I almost, I almost call her Joy. Because she, like, if Joy was nice, it would be this person. Because she's, she's so sweet. She's so nice. Anyway, little bitty thing. But she's, she's so cool. Anyway, she likes Style Encore. I just haven't had a lot of luck there myself. But we're going to go to what my son calls, my younger son calls, the Good Goodwill. Because he always finds Nerf guns in there. He loves his little Nerf Nerf stuff. And uh, he, <laughs> they always have tons of stuff in there like that. Like lots of toys and kid stuff and little Nerf things. He always finds something. I didn't tell him I was going when I was leaving the house. I told him I was just going to the little thrift store. I didn't mention that I was going to the Good Goodwill. Because if he's not with me, he won't know what he's missing. That's kind of how I look at it. Like, you're not you're not losing out on anything. And he has a whole closet full of those damn things anyway. He doesn't need any more. But he thinks he does. It's awful. They're just everywhere in his room. I'm always tripping over them. They're everywhere. 
But anyway, he's having a sleepover, one more sleepover before school starts. He got his school schedule yesterday, and it looks pretty good. His brother looked it over. He was like, oh, yeah, you're going to like this teacher because, you know, my son just graduated from that school. So he said, yeah, you're going to like this teacher. Oh, uh, this, you know, he said, you got a pretty good schedule here. But, yeah, it's going to work out just fine. So, it looks like he's going to have a pretty good, uh, well, it's for the first semester, and the next semester he'll have a different schedule. They do it by semesters. The high school I went to, you just had the same classes all year, but they do it a little differently at this school. Each semester you have different stuff. So, but the first semester looks good. So, I have a pretty good feeling about it, but I did tell him he's going to take school more seriously. What is that? Oh, they're doing a community yard sale down that way. Oh, okay. I never, I never feel like going to yard sales anymore. I don't know why. I just, I never do. I mean, I, I don't. I went to one earlier this summer, and I did buy a few things, but overall, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't care about it. I don't bother with them. So, what was I saying? Shit. So it looks like it's going to be pretty good. I did tell my son he's got to get more serious about school. He just kind of coasted last year and just did like the bare minimum all year. And I said, you're going to have to start doing better than that. Um, for what he wants to do after graduation, he's going to have to, you know, like you got to get serious, dude, with your school work. You're going to have to do better from here on out. I mean, your grades in middle school aren't that important, but from here on out, they're going to matter. So for what you want to do, you need to, you need to get more serious about it, so, I know he can do better, he's a smart little kid, he's very smart, he's, he's one of these people that, uh, if it's something he's interested in, he will give it 110%, he is all about it, he will become obsessed with it, he will just fixate on it, if it's something he doesn't care about, <laughs> good luck, he just, ugh, it's a struggle to get him to do anything like you got to do the, you got to pay attention in the classes that you don't like as well. You know, I know it's not fun, but sometimes you just have to take classes that you, you don't care about. We all have to do it. You know, we all had to take classes that we didn't enjoy. God knows I did. I hated math. I hated math class. Hated that damn class. But fortunately for me, the, the, my junior and senior year, I had a teacher who was so awesome. I had I had extraordinary teachers in high school, and I realized how lucky I was. I had teachers that cared, you know, that really cared, and they would go that extra mile to make it interesting. And it made all the difference in the world in my high school experience. I loved it. I had my, all my history teacher. I love that man. He was so great. I took advanced world history with him and U.S. history. And he made it so interesting. It wasn't just about memorizing dates and stuff. Like, it was really interesting. And I really looked forward to his class. I did. I loved his class. I just ate it up. I learned so much. And it was fascinating. Um, it was so great. A good teacher can make such a difference. It can change a kid's life. Because I always hated history before that. And math, I had... You got to be somebody special to make math interesting, especially for me, because I don't like, I'm not, my brain is just not geared that way, you know. What is that, the left brain? Nah, I, I don't live in, I don't live in that hemisphere of my brain. <laughs> now, my brother does. He, he is a math whiz. He was just a genius at math. He, I guess he still is. Um, he did really well in, well, every subject. My brother just excelled in everything, really. Um... Not me so much, but yeah, he did. I did okay in school. I did. I did. I did really well. Um. But yeah, compared to my brother, no. Nah. But I mean, anybody compared to my brother <laughs> wouldn't look like anything special. Um. But yeah, my younger son, if it's something he's interested in, he will spend his free time learning more and more about it online. I mean, he will just go on right. I'll go online and Google it read about it, go to YouTube, watch videos about it, and he will just have this encyclopedic knowledge of whatever it is. Because um, he wants to go into gunsmithing, and he is, he's learned so much just on his own. Just going online and learning about the history of different types of firearms, and 
it's fascinating. Like he, he, that's what he wants to go into after high school. So he's really into it. And uh, it's just cool to see what he takes the initiative to, to do. Um, and he could tell you all about the history of Nerf and all the things that they've created. He got interested in that. Uh, different types of cars. He's learned about a lot about different types of cars. When, he, when he's interested in it, he puts his whole self into learning about it. It's really, it's great. I'm glad that he does that. But I have to remind him, like, you have to learn about the boring stuff, too. And different things are boring to different people. You know. My brother was fascinated by math and did a lot of independent study and learning on his own about advanced math concepts and whatever the hell you call it. Like, mathing really hard. I don't, I don't know. But he, you know, he is just a whiz when it comes to anything mathematical. He just, he is. I mean, he's just incredible. And most of it he learned on his own. He didn't learn it in a class. He learned it on his own. And we didn't even have the internet. Like, he had to go to the library and shit. But he did. He did. He was, he was so interested in it. And, you know, my parents would buy him books about, you know, Nikola Tesla and all kinds of mathy type shit. I don't know, because I was never into that kind of stuff, but, uh, yeah, it's great. Um, so it's just neat to see a kid take the initiative to learn stuff. It's really cool. And, uh, so, <sighs> but I gotta get back home before the first kid arrives. I've bought snacks. I have food. We have our meals planned out for tonight. Um, and tomorrow morning, so, yeah, I let him have one more sleepover before school starts. Just, you know, it's okay. What I'm planning for next weekend, um, I have a plan to do something. You know, I've been thinking about this for a while, and I, I've been kind of doing this for a bit. You know, when I do my cooking videos, I try to do simple recipes that anybody could do. I don't use fancy ingredients, number one, because I'm not really comfortable with fancy ingredients and fancy recipes. And number two, I imagine a lot of other people aren't either. And I'm trying to encourage people to try to, you know, try cooking. Try try making, you know, taking a recipe and making it. And because it can be very intimidating if you've never done that before. A lot of people grew up not really learning how to cook. And I was one of those people. I, my mom never taught me how to cook anything. She always just wanted my brother and me out of the way. Now, to be fair, we did live in a little little single wide trailer and the kitchen was like this big and there really wasn't room for other people in there. So she just wanted us to go away. Like just, she would literally just tell us to go away. Just go away. She was trying to cook. You know, she had worked all day and she comes home and she's got to cook a meal from scratch because my dad didn't do leftovers. She had to make a meal from scratch every night have a hot meal on that table every night so she had to come home straight from work and cook dinner she didn't want us in the way she didn't have time to deal with us and then our job after dinner was to clean all the plates off the table and uh, do dishes and put everything away that was our job my brother and me and sometimes we would take turns sometimes we would do it you know both working on it together it just depended on how it worked out but that was our job was just to clean up after after we ate um I never really learned to cook anything. So, and I, I got to thinking, well, when I come up with recipes that I want to do, I try to pick things that are relatively simple, that a beginner could do, with simple ingredients that you can get pretty much anywhere, at least in the USA. I mean, some of it may be stuff if you live in other countries you may not be able to get. But maybe you could find, you know, like you could Google it and find a substitute, something in your area that would work. You know, I can't make it universal. I can't make every recipe perfect for everybody, but I try to find simple, tasty recipes that you can enjoy and you can make, even if you've never really cooked before. Because I want to encourage people to try it, especially with the, you know, with the economy the way it is. People, don't think I don't know. I, people are struggling. I know. I know people personally who are struggling. I'm very grateful to be in the position that I'm in for now. I mean, who knows how long it's going to last, but I, you know, I want to try to help people learn how to cook because one thing, I think it's good for your self-confidence. I think it's really good to, you know, it boosts your self-confidence to learn a new skill, any new skill. But 
a lot of people, you know, they get food to go, they get, they go out to eat, they'll do DoorDash or whatever they do. Um, well, you can prepare food way cheaper than you can buy it in a restaurant. You can. I mean, it's still not, it's still more expensive than it was even just a few years ago. But it's cheaper than, you know, doing DoorDash every night. And I know people who do DoorDash every night. Like, oh my God, I cannot imagine what you're paying for food. That's crazy. I have done DoorDash once in my entire life. And that was when I had a Zoom meeting for my previous job. And the company sent me a DoorDash certificate and they paid for my lunch. That's the only time in my life I've ever done anything like DoorDash or Uber Eats or anything. They sent me a DoorDash uh, gift certificate thing online for me to do DoorDash so I could have lunch during the Zoom meeting. And they did that for everybody. It's the only time I've ever done it. Um, we don't really go out to eat. My kids don't like to go out to eat. So, and I mean, I could take it or leave it. Most of the time we just make food at home. I mean, I buy most of my, everything I can get at Aldi, I do. And I will continue to do that because that's just the way I prefer to do it. I don't care to spend any more money on food than I have to. And it wouldn't matter if I had a billion dollars in the bank. I would still do that. It wouldn't change anything about that. I would still shop at Aldi. I would still buy my clothes at the little thrift store. None of that would change. And that's, I think, a common misconception that a lot of people have. Because and that's something I witnessed personally when I worked at um, a previous law firm, I don't know so much about anybody that I work with anymore, but I used to work for this law firm, and you know, a lot of those attorneys, I mean, I know how much they charge per hour, and I have a general idea of how much they made per year. You're talking people that made three, 400,000 a year. Um, they did not live extravagant lifestyles. They really didn't. Most of them would drive like a, a Camry, you know, and you know, I mean, it was not, it wasn't a super old car, but it wasn't like an expensive car. You know, they didn't go out to eat. They'd bring their lunch to work. You know, they, they just didn't. And I saw more than a few of them in Goodwill, like ran into them while shopping in Goodwill. Just because you make a lot of money doesn't mean that you spend a lot of money. You know, in fact, it's smart not to. You know, if you want to rich people don't live like rich people. Most of them don't. Like the attorney I used to work with, he is, he's a multimillionaire because of the investments, mostly because of the investments. I mean, he made damn good money as an attorney, but because of the investments that he's made over the years, he's a multimillionaire. He buys his clothes at Costco and I think he did, he drove a Camry forever and it was not, it was like 10, 15 years old. I don't know. And he did later buy a Mercedes, but it wasn't like one of those super nice ones. You know, he doesn't live extravagantly. He really doesn't. So, if you want to be rich, you cannot spend like you got all the money. You know what I mean? You can you have to be careful about managing your money because you'd be you'd be shocked how fast you can spend a hell of a lot of money without even realizing it. You really can. And uh the attorney I used to work with, he grew up really poor. He grew, he's from Canada, and he grew. He was part of a big family. They were very poor. Didn't really have anything. Um, he got a scholarship playing hockey. He was a semi-pro hockey player, and got a scholarship. And that's how he was able to go to college because his family couldn't afford to send him. That's how he was able to go to college, and he became an attorney. And you know, he's he said, "I'm the only one from my family that ever." really did anything like that that you know like got out or whatever um but growing up like that I think makes you appreciate the value of a dollar and you just continue to take that way you continue you, I think people go one of two ways with that if you grow up with you know if you grow up poor you either carry that with you and you you learn to budget your money carefully and you continue to do so or you get a little bit of money and you blow it as soon as you get it you like have to prove something to everybody like you got to have the nice car or the big house you got to flash that money around you know it seems like people go one way or the other with that 
because I, I know people that grew up poor that are so desperate to prove to people who don't care that look I got this big you know nice house and this super expensive car you know they buy a new car every couple of years they always have the latest and greatest technology and they're always bragging about about this big thing I just bought this new boat like oh my god it's embarrassing I feel bad for people like that like you know you don't have to try so hard. We like you whether you have a new boat or not. You don't you don't have to prove anything. But they just have this drive in them to prove that they are a big shot. And it's just, I don't know, I think it's kind of sad. I'm not impressed by it. I just feel sorry for them. You don't have to impress us. My God. Anyway, I don't know how the hell I got off on that. But anyway... So, I wanted to do another cooking video, and I haven't done one since I started this new job, and I started this new job three and a half months ago. So, next weekend, I want to try to do one unless something comes up that prevents me from doing so. Um, <clears throat> I want to be able to do one. So... I was thinking, what can I do? So I was online just looking at different recipes and stuff, and I think, I think we're gonna make chicken noodle soup. Because you know, fall's coming. Shit, fall's gonna be here before you know. You know, it's almost Labor Day. That's crazy as hell. I can't believe it. It's the middle of August. That's nuts. So I thought we're gonna make chicken noodle soup. And and I want to talk at the beginning. I was thinking about talking at the beginning about if you've never cooked before some of the things it would be good to have you know just um like different things like i'm going to recommend a crock pot and an air fryer now i don't have an air fryer but i want to mention that like if you are in a position where you could say well i don't have the means to cook do you have an outlet i mean i'm not a big fan of hot plates because they can be very dangerous um, I have been in a situation where that's all I did have for a while was a hot plate because I didn't have a stove. They can be dangerous. You got to be very careful with hot plates. Um, I had a hot plate and a microwave, and that was all I had. Um, I want to talk about you know because I have I have a crock pot, and in the winter time I use it a lot because you can. I mean there are tons of recipes online of th of things you can make with a crock pot, and it's so easy and so good and you don't need a stove or anything like that to make it so i'm going to talk about that um like it would be good to have just you know a decent sized frying pan uh, a roasting pan maybe some cookie sheets things like that just basic it does not have to be expensive stuff none of my stuff is expensive stuff i don't have you know fancy shit and it works just fine you don't have to go spend hundreds of dollars on stuff so I'll talk about that briefly at the beginning. And then what we're gonna do, I'm going to roast a chicken. I'm gonna get a whole chicken. I haven't done this in a while, but I'm gonna get a whole chicken and I'm gonna talk about that because if you've been cooking all your life, you might not realize how intimidating things can be to people who have never done it before. You know, and uh, you know, if you've never cooked before, you might look at that whole chicken in the grocery store and go, what the hell do you do with that? Because I know I've had that thought. Because <laughs> I had to learn to do that on my own. My mom didn't teach me how to do that either. And there are a million different ways to cook a whole chicken. I mean, you know, do it your way. I'll just show my way. And I'm not saying there's any right or wrong way to do it. I mean, unless the chicken ends up on fire, I mean, that might be the wrong way. Um but as long as it gets cooked thoroughly and you're not going to get worms from it, you probably did it right. Whatever way you prefer, everybody does it differently. But I'm gonna, we're going to roast a chicken and talk a little bit about that. And, you know, I'm going to show you how you can do that. And I'm going to give the price of the chicken because I want to do, I want to give it some, I want to compare it. Like if you go to say you go to McDonald's, have you been to, have you been to McDonald's any, in a while, any fast food place? Have you seen the cost of these, you know, the, the combo meals they have? Holy hell. My God. I know, because I, I went there uh, not too long ago because my younger son wanted something from McDonald's. And I was just, while I was waiting, I was looking at the prices of these combo meals like, Jesus. I didn't get a combo meal because his, his tastes are weird. He wanted two sad burgers, which is hamburgers with nothing on them, and some fries. And that was all he wanted anyway. And that's all I got. I don't. I didn't get anything for myself. I didn't get any drinks or anything else. 
anyway, I'm going to talk about that. Like, you could get a whole chicken and cook it, and you can use the meat from this chicken. You can make sandwiches. We're going to put it in our soup. You could use part of it for one thing, part of it for another thing. Just like when you cook a turkey, same thing. You can just eat some as it is, save some later for sandwiches. You can eat off of this chicken all week long. And that chicken may be like eight bucks. That is cheaper than most of the extra value meals that you can get at McDonald's for that whole chicken. And you can use it throughout the week to make any number of things, assuming you have a refrigerator. And I know not everybody has a refrigerator. You know, I, again, I cannot accommodate everybody, but I'm trying to give people some ideas that they can use going forward to save money on, on food. Because I think, I don't think it's going to get any better anytime soon. I think it's going to get a lot worse before it gets better as far as like the cost of everything. I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. I have no reason to think that. Shit ain't going to get cheaper. I mean, you know that. Nothing is going to, it ain't going to get cheaper. It's going to just keep going up and up and up. And I'm very conscious of this myself. When I shop, I look at the price of everything and I see it myself. The price of stuff I buy all the time goes up. Not every time I'm in there, but I mean, it inch, it's just inching up. Sometimes it has a big jump. I am very aware of what stuff costs. And I don't like it either. Um... Because like I say, you know, I, I do, I am still responsible for two kids by myself. I don't get any help from anybody for these kids. I get $145 a month in child support. That's all I get. I don't get any help paying for school or health insurance or, or medical, dental. I don't get help with any of that. You know, my car insurance, when I added my son to it, quadrupled. My premiums went up by by factor of four like it's times four what i was paying before that is a massive jump i'm paying a lot just for car insurance premiums twice a year i do it once a year but they the longest they'll let me go is six months but i do get a bit of a discount do paying sick every six months instead of every month it's a lot of money um i am going to expect him to start paying for his share of that the next time I have to pay it though. <laughs> I already told him that. Like, you gotta have to start paying this. This is ridiculous. You you make enough money to help pay for this. Anyway, anyway, I am distracting myself. But I'm gonna do I need I need to wrap this up. I just realized what time it is. Um I'm going to we're gonna roast a chicken, talk about that, talk about some of the stuff you can have, just the basics for cooking at home. I try to help people find ways to stretch their dollar because I, I know what it's like to have to do that. I There really hasn't ever been a time in my life where that has not been a part of my life. I watched my parents do it when I was on my own. I had to do it. I understand the concept and I understand how important it is to do that. So that's what I'm trying to help all while trying to provide relaxation at the same time. I'm trying to do both, you know. So that's what I'm thinking about doing next weekend. Anyway, I need, to, I need to be quiet. I need to get in there and do any shopping I'm going to do. But thank you so much for watching and for being here. Happy Saturday to you. I'm going to go see if I can find any deals. If not, I'm going to be right back out here and I'll just go home. <laughs> Screw them. Yeah, thank you so much for being here and for watching. I hope you have a fantastic weekend and I'll see you again soon.